back to Zurich Precious Metals Summit. We're here with an exciting prospect generator in the Yukon Strategic Metals. Richard Dexler, thank you for taking time and coming to talk to us about this opportunity. Well, yeah, thanks for letting me share the story with your audience. It's, uh, yeah, we've, we're a large-scale project generator in Yukon uh, based around the Archer Cathro team. It's very well known in Yukon. They've been involved in the majority of the major discoveries and deposits in Yukon over the years and been active since 65. 65. Yeah. So this is not a new company. It's a company that really understands this area. Uh, you have quite an extensive portfolio. Tell us about the size, how many properties and projects exist in in the company? Yeah, so we have got 96 projects currently uh, that we hold 100% interest in. Uh, we have 18 projects under option to other parties where they're spending money to earn in. Mm -hmm. And then we've got 12 royalty interests. It's 12 royalty interests. So you you find opportunities, you find projects, and how, how do you find these projects, first of all? We're, what is your specialty? How, how do you find these opportunities? Yeah, it's basically, you know, you know we're a good group of scientists, and so it's just digging through the data, and, and we've got one of the largest libraries of, of mineral data in all of Western Canada, and that, that's just basically the, the genesis of strategic, is that we've been going through that data, coming up with the best targets, always researching new ideas that are, that are coming out, trying to look, you know, how to apply new models to, to our jurisdiction and you know trying to be agnostic to the metals you know we've got copper gold lead zinc all sorts of battery metals and all sorts of things so I mean Yukon's well endowed with all sorts of different metals so we, we just go all over the place what do you find and oh so you have these joint venture uh, projects so how, let's explain to the honest audience kind of how that model works um, the prospect generator model okay. you make you get you find another partner that comes into the company and you let, allow them to earn into the project. So just give us a, tr a typical kind of situation. Yeah, so there's works. a few different models, um, some of which we will take, say if, if there's a new company coming to us and they need projects to start the company up, we can supply those for say 19.9% interest and we'll maintain a royalty. We did that with a company like Precipitate Gold, mm -hmm. who's like son, since left Yukon, they've gone on, they have a JV in, with Barrick now in the Dominican Republic, but we're still a large shareholder. Um, there's companies like Benjamin Hill Mining that we've just signed an option agreement with on one of our copper projects that's just to the south of, the, of Western Copper's huge casino deposit. And there they have to make $11 million of expenditures on the project, drill it off basically, and, and with those expenditures they can earn us up to a 60% interest. So, you know, targets like that where the prize is so huge, we don't want to give up 100% in, in any way. We want to see what's there first before we really let it go. Sure. Um, and some of the situations end up where you end up with the royalty in, in the projects, or you yeah. end up taking equity positions, you spin them out. Like, what, what, what's the end result if there's a success at the project? Okay, yeah, I mean, at, at try, we try to keep it a, a deep, sorry, a royalty at the end of every one of our deals. So, you know, whether someone earns 100% or we're, or we're vending it to a new company, we'll keep a royalty and take shares. Um, and yeah, I mean, royalties, as you know, can be can drive quite the uh, the valuation sometimes. I mean, back in 2012, we sold one of our royalty interests for 30 million US. And what is the market cap of the company today? Currently, market caps are around 20 million, and uh, which is quite beat up since we have about 35 million dollars worth of shares of other companies currently, and two and a half million dollars in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, obviously, this market is extremely depressed. Um, people are just focused on other things. So the opportunities right now are, are quite interesting. So you're, you're trading at levels that we saw at the bottom in 2008. Yeah, honestly, last time we hit, or, yeah, last time we hit 19 cents, like broke below the 20 cent and was in, uh, yeah, 20, 2008. And by 2011, we were over $4. Wow. So, I mean, there's there's so much leverage in this model because we, with, with major shareholdings in so many different projects that when the cycle comes back, you can have, you know, wins throughout your portfolio without having to go to the market and, and dilute the company to, to spend money on your own projects because we've got you know exposure through joint ventures exposure through option deals and exposure through major shareholdings and a lot of more advanced projects so you're offering investors an opportunity to get into the exploration sector but minimizing the risk yeah, exactly. of, of exploration so yeah. uh, what is it that you're looking at right now are you continuing to add more property and projects is it is it getting more difficult to find new opportunities to bring into the company or do you have so many projects that you just don't know if you have enough to work on right yeah now? I mean we're, we're always managing the portfolio that we have uh, so going out and doing new exploration a little bit each year to you know maintain the claims and advance projects to, towards the point where they're drill ready and that's usually the point where you can where it's easier to attract a partner once you've really developed those targets so you can add the most value from the company side uh, 
uh, taking it to the drill ready state and then finding the partners uh, that be interested to take exactly. the capital risk to, to go drill this. Yeah. Uh, so you have how many projects already set? Yeah, up over 96 there? in the company and 18 under option. Yeah, 18 others. under option. Um, what is the time frame on a lot of these options? Are they a couple, two, three years for them to earn in? Yeah, typically they're a few years. I mean, the Benjamin Hill one, for example, they've got till 2027 to make their expenditures. So they're, they're out there drilling right now, made in drill program. They just mobilized the drill last week. And so they'll get a couple holes in before Christmas and then with success, they'll be back there next year with a bigger program. And so they'll just keep ramping up until they get to their final earn in. So I imagine with so many properties and projects, some win, some don't, but with that many, you probably have seen some successes in the past. Let's yeah, I mean, with us. What well, our, our team is actually behind the discovery of both of the highest grade, greater than one million ounce gold deposits in Yukon. So one of those was recently purchased by Hecla Mining. Uh, the other one is uh, held by Rockhaven Resources 100%, and we're a 30% shareholder of, of Rockhaven. So we've got a huge exposure to that project. So remain, yeah, continue to hold exposure. Um, there's another, you have an in interest in another company that is not exactly in the mining sector directly. It's not a, a mining project. So let's talk about this new kind of uh, interesting technology that is uh, over 11% the company holds an interest in. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting company called uh, Terra CO2 Technologies. And it was it's a, an idea that our CEO came up with when we were looking at ways to deal with ta the tailings issue. And, and initially we were looking at reacting CO2 off gases with, with sulfides to create carbonates, which would be a stable, not, not create any acid rock drainage. And, and when the economics on that weren't working quite as we'd hoped, the, the scientists kept moving it forward and they developed a, a, basically another way to do dry stack. And in the end, it was a, a new cement. And, and so we can use waste rock and uh, sort of mine tailings, uh, dredge material from rivers, all sorts of things as feedstock for cement instead of limestone. Now, cement is one of the largest uh, single contributors to global CO2 emissions, you know, five to seven percent. And basically, that's a lot of that is from cooking the limestone and driving the CO2 off. So, so now with this technology, you can take waste material like tailings from a big porphyry system and use that as feedstock to, the, to this new process. And you know, it's been a lot of years in the works. Um, but over the past five, six years, we've had some major investors come in. So the current, currently the largest investor is uh, Bill Gates' incubator company, Breakthrough Energy. And so between that company, uh, Lenex, the major home builder in the US, and Rio Tinto, they've invested over 60 million US to bring this thing forward. And, and we're finally getting to the point where we're looking at commercialization. So they announced in September they're gonna be building a commercial scale plant in, uh, in the US in 2024. And they just had a test pour at a Porsche facility earlier this summer, so everything's looking Great. Well, that's very interesting. So you have a lot of different opportunities. The market cap is not reflecting the, the, the true value, I think, of this company. Well, obviously, the market is depressed, but for investors, it seems like a pretty low risk opportunity, especially in the exploration sector, to, to where you're reducing your risk through the prospect generator model to get exposure to the upside. So I would imagine uh, if this market is about to turn around, like you said, in 2008, there's a lot of, you have a lot of leverage built in. Um, is there any other part of the story that uh, you'd like to share that I... Uh, I, I guess I should hit one of, our, one of our other major shareholdings is uh, in the company called Broden Mining, which this was it's kind of related to the, the Terra CO2 story, because it, it, it was the tailings facility at Faro that we were, we were thinking about when we came up with this idea. And so Faro was at one time the largest lead zinc mine in Canada. And it's, it hasn't been in production for a number of years now. It's a big environmental liability. So that's why we're looking at how to clean this up. And so we've developed a partnership with the local First Nation. And, and now what we're looking to do is to redevelop all the mines in that district. And historically, the, the mine went into bankruptcy and wasn't put to bed properly. Like they didn't follow any of their closure plans, so that's why there's this big environmental liability. So what we're looking to do is get back in there with modern mining techniques, partnered with the locals, and put this mine back into production, and then you've got the capacity to clean up all these legacy issues. Well, I'm sure. I would imagine government support. Yeah, I mean, for this. we have a lot of support from the local First Nation, from the federal government and the territorial government, but because there is a, an ongoing reclamation program there, uh, we need to have all the signatories to that remediation plan agree to a change in the plan because we're going to take a bunch of the, of the land out of that remediation plan. And so we're waiting on uh, one of the downstream First Nations and they are, they're looking for assurances that the water quality isn't going to be affected. So once, once uh, they are, you know, 
how, get their head around that you know we're going to be improving the situation, not making it worse, then I think uh, we'll be able to get them on board. And then we've got a PEA already ready, in, and um, you know the, the deposits that are that are left already drilled off have close to nine billion pounds of lead zinc, over a hundred million ounces of silver, and close to a million ounces of gold. So there's a lot of resources sitting there, ready to be mined. One one of the deposits had a ten year mine life on it, and it was mined for eighteen months before the previous company that held it went went under. And it's owned one hundred percent by the company. Um, it will be owned 100% by Broden Mining, which has yeah, a partnership between us, a couple other groups, and the, and the local First Nation. And we've got a 32% interest in Broden. Fantastic. Yeah. A lot of interesting angles <laughs> to strategic metals. Thank you for giving us a bit of an insight. Look forward to following up and following that story developed in the coming year. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you.